If you're a new course creator, group-based learning is a fantastic way to serve multiple customers or clients as opposed to a one-on-one -on -one basis that can take more time and energy. The challenge, however, is structuring your program in a way that your students can digest the content. In this video, I'll share a few tips on running your cohort-based course and how you can achieve this using LearnDash Groups. Hi there, I'm Michael Cunningham from LearnDash, where our mission is to empower course creators to succeed online. If you're unfamiliar with the term cohort-based learning, let me break it down for you. A cohort-based course is a collaborative learning style in which a group of individuals called a cohort advance through an educational program together. This is similar to the traditional style of schooling where students advance from one level to the other together, generally with a teacher to guide them through each stage. It's pretty much the same for a cohort-based course whereby your students or members enroll at the same time and advance through each module or section of the course and finish at the same time. This module of teaching is perfect if you want to offer your course on a yearly, biannually, or quarterly basis. It's also perfect if you run group pods that facilitate engagement among the group members. If your organization requires employees to receive specific training, then cohort-based courses might also be for you. If your course doesn't start until a specific date and you want to grant access to all users at the same time, then you may also want to use cohort-based learning. With the cohort-based model, there's a bit of additional setup that is required, as well as some consideration for the medium in which the engagement is handled. So let's dive into it. How long is the course going to be? In a cohort-based course, the majority of the training is going to be delivered in the course. In order to determine the length of your course, you should first outline the content and structure the content to be delivered in a timely schedule. You should also take into consideration the fact that the lessons need to be as simple as possible and allow time for the group of students or the cohort to practice and implement what they learned. Many students have also shared that their experience with the cohort-based model allows time for implementation. As such, they feel more comfortable digesting the content and putting it into practice. So maybe your program only requires 14 days, or perhaps it requires a bit more time to break down the more complex topics. You can decide to drip feed your content on a daily, weekly, or monthly basis, but we'll talk more about drip feeding in just a bit. It is quite common for a typical cohort-based program to take six to eight weeks, but it's up to you as the expert to go with what is best for your students. Once you've mapped out the structure, you should be able to determine how the course needs to be. Will there be live training? In the current climate of online learning, most group-based learning programs have a live coaching element. It's also really beneficial if your program is one that requires a bit more hand-holding and guidance from you as the expert. There's an expectation for you as the expert to show up live with a group of people to answer questions that can't be answered in your course or videos. You can facilitate the online training using tools like Facebook groups, Facebook Lives, or Zoom and other platforms that you can embed into your WordPress website to accommodate your LearnDash courses. Now let me explain drip feeding. This simply means that you'll be releasing each lesson or module one after the other over a period of time that you decide on. It can be every day, weekly, monthly, or on a specific date. This means that your course content in the form of videos, PDFs, or audio files will be made accessible to your students in a scheduled timeline. You can easily achieve this by accessing the settings of each lesson in your course and accurately inputting the period of time the lesson will be released from the initial start date. Here's a quick tip. It can be encouraging to students to hop into their course with preloaded content to welcome them. Course creators and coaches have also benefited from this model since they generally allow for a limited number of students that they can accommodate without feeling the overwhelming pressure. This takes me to my next question. How many students are you going to intake? As a new course creator, you may want to enroll as many students as possible, but hear me out. It may be a good idea to put a limit on the number of students you wish to serve for the initial cohort. Cohorts are community-based, and for the initial cohort, you're going to depend on your students to help you restructure the course as you receive feedback and questions throughout the entirety of the program. In some cases, you may be required to review assignments and their progress, this can be time consuming, so it's going to be beneficial to get your program dialed in on the first round so you can feel confident allowing more students in on the next one. 
This can also allow for some scarcity in your program as you do your marketing. Now let's talk about adding actionable steps. You should try to add as many actionable steps as possible to ensure that your students are all on the same page at the end of each module. This can also increase your course completion rate since there's an expectation to take action, especially if you encourage your members to share their results with the group. And of course, this leaves the technical setup. The technical aspect of running a group can be facilitated using LearnDash groups. With features like group content protection, you can tailor specific content to a cohort based on their access. Have a research page you only want available for a group? No problem, you can block it. Special non-course related videos for a certain group? No problem, you can also block that as well. If you're holding a webinar for a member of a particular group, no problem, you can also block that as well. Using the group hierarchy feature, you can also split your LearnDash courses into subgroups. This is perfect if you need to add some organization to the cohort of learners that are going through your courses. You can also transition your students to a membership once they have completed the program for recurring revenue and to offer them continued value in being able to access you as the expert. It is no secret that cohort-based courses are becoming more and more popular in the e-learning industry. Students love that they get to work through the courses and learn together and not feel alone in the process. Being part of a community with like-minded individuals makes the learning process an enjoyable one, and going with the group-based model can definitely cultivate this experience for your next course. So, does the cohort-based model seem like the best approach for your next course? Let us know in the comments area. If you're getting value out of this content, be sure to give this video a like. We really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comment area below the video. If you want to be notified when we upload more videos like this one, be sure to subscribe and click the bell notification. That's all for now, Michael, signing out.